All right. The term for club and country usually means giving it your all to perform at the highest level for whatever team you are currently with, whether it be your domestic club or the badge for your country. Now, naturally, that means that you are picking one or the other. However, on July 11th, 2004, DeMarcus Beasley took this whole slogan to a brand new level. On this day, the USMNT entered a one-game friendly against Poland, looking to continue a streak of very good performances on the year. They were unbeaten in six matches with five straight wins. Only two goals were conceded in that time, and they were in one game. one nothing versus Poland. one nothing versus Mexico. Shocker, not. one nothing versus uh, 4 nothing versus Honduras. 3 nothing, and then 3-2 versus Granada in the World Cup qualifying circuit. In this stretch, Beasley scored four of the 12 goals for the U.S. men's national team and was proving that he was a massive part of the plans going forward, even at 22 years old. So, of course, he did not want to be left out of this friendly either. So when he was called up, he very much wanted to go. The only problem, Chicago Fire were scheduled to play the New England Revolution in the second game of a doubleheader that day. So at 22 years old, Demarcus Beasley did the unthinkable. Both games were played at Soldier Field in Chicago, and there was a 30-minute break between matches. With this information, Beasley started testing the waters a little bit. He called up then-fire head coach Dave Sorachin and presented him with the craziest of ideas. In an interview, he said, I told him that I wanted to play in both games. And he responded by saying that there was just no way I was going to play. And I just left it at that. A couple of weeks go by, and we get to game day. The U.S. would play Poland to a 1-1 draw in front of 40,000 fans skewed towards the Polish uh, nationality in Soldier Field with Carlos Bocanegra getting an 89th-minute equalizer. Beasley, as we mentioned, went the full 90 uh, for U.S. MNT coach Bruce Arena. As soon as the match was ended, Beasley searched high and low inside Soldier Field to find Dave Sarachin and pleaded to be involved. I told him I feel fine, that I could even start if he wanted me to. He gave me a little laugh and said, if I really meant it, I could make the bench. And if they needed me, I could get in in the second half. And that was all he needed to hear. Beasley ran over to the fire dressing room uh, in Soldier Field to greet his mates, and they responded exactly how you would expect. (laughs) They asked me what the hell I was doing I told them I felt fine. I wanted to give what I could to the team. Now, it wasn't mentioned at the time, but upon reflection, uh, Beasley recognized that the driving force behind his rash decision was that this may have been the last time that he would play in front of the fire supporters. His deal with PSV was nearing completion, which meant that he was going to make a trip overseas very, very soon, and he wanted to play for his club. He mentioned this to Sarakin, And Beasley thinks it swayed his mind a little. So then in the 60th minute of this fire game, Sarakin gave the signal. Beasley took off the warmups and stood poised and ready to enter the game for the Chicago fire. This is now less than two hours after going a full 90 for his country, which as anybody who has watched the U.S. national team before or after MLS games knows, the level of intensity is a bit higher in international games. Fans erupted with joy as they were told leading up to the match that Beasley was not getting in at all that night, so don't hold your breath. Thinking that they had seen the last of him in a fire kit, this sent them over the moon. With the game nodded at one, Beasley gave what he could to the fire that night. However, destiny determined that the points were to be split at the final whistle. The game ended 1-1, and that was how his cameo finished. In his interview, he said that moment, it didn't really matter about the results, but just to be able to play in two matches with two teams in one night, that was pretty special. When asked about his fitness after the match, he responded, exactly as you would expect. I was completely exhausted. I played 30 minutes and I couldn't run anymore. My legs were like jello. Beasley notes that uh, next to his U.S. Open Cup championships, doing the double duty for USMNT and Fire in the same night was one of his favorite moments of his career although many people don't remember. 
he closed the interview with a statement of gratitude. Obviously, when you're with the national team, you don't play with your club team. So the fact that they felt I was important enough to play in both games was pretty special to me. He also noted that he's glad he did it when he was so young, because if given the opportunity today, he would run the other way and laugh at you. And that was the story of DeMarcus Beasley doing double duty. So I guess a full 90 and an extra 30, it's it's kind of just like full 90 plus full extra time. So he actually, he did mention that in this um, interview that I looked up and I'll, I'll go find it just to be sure. Um, it was hot time in old town was, it was the Chicago fire. Um, I think it's a, it's the bar stool uh, SB nation. Remember how SB nation used to have like, indiv- yeah. So it was, that was the SB nation, Chicago fire one. And he, he went on to say, Uh, where'd it go? Beasley played 120 minutes plenty of times in his careers, but it was always in extra time. Playing 90 minutes, then sitting on the bench for 60 more and playing again was a very different thing, is what he said. So, that's yeah. So, because that's the thing too, right? When you're when you're in it, 90 minutes, all right, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Okay, I got a, I got a five minute break. We go again. 60 minutes of going hot to cold to back to to going again. That's tough. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm sure he was, I'm sure his body was really feeling that at the end. Forget like just being tired, like cardio wise. I'm sure the body was just completely exhausted by the end of that. Yeah. And he would actually end up going on to play two more games for uh, Chicago, a midweek and one on the weekend after that. Um, And then he left. So it wasn't his last chance, but nobody knew that at the time. So. Gotcha. Okay. Good story. Yeah, very hey, unique. Wish... That's that's a that's an MLS unique one. You don't see that anywhere else, especially the early days. You're not going to see that now either. Yeah, yeah, definitely not nowadays. I feel like everybody's very careful about how they uh, handle everybody's game time. 